Hey, welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus. We're at chapter 12 today, verses 16 to 20. Let's read. On the first day you shall have a holy assembly, and another holy assembly on the seventh day. No work at all shall be done on them except what must be eaten by every person that alone may be prepared by you. You shall also observe the feast of unleavened bread, for on this very day I brought your hosts out of the land of Egypt. Therefore you shall observe this day throughout your generations as a permanent ordinance. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the twenty-first day of the month at evening. Seven days there shall be no leaven found in your houses, for whoever eats what is leavened, that person shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he is an alien or a native of the land. You shall not eat anything leavened in all your dwellings. You shall eat unleavened bread. So the first and seventh day uh, of this feast are both to be holy days, holy assemblies, a kind of a, kind of a Sabbath. And no work is to be done on those days except the minimum just to provide food for the family. I want you to notice also it says here that no Hebrew, not even any stranger in the gates, even a non-Hebrew person, is to eat anything unleavened. This is kind of an interesting piece. The matzot is to mark, you know, the day of deliverance. It's, it's simple, straightforward, it's plain, it's, it's just a simple marking. While Passover marks what happened the night before the Hebrews left Egypt, the unleavened bread, that begins in the morning of the 15th, and this is marking the leaving in haste. So Passover looks back to what God did, punishing the Egyptians and, and delivering the Hebrew firstborn, whereas the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Matzot Feast, this has to do with being ready and going when God says to go. When God says go, you've got to be ready to go. Be ready, travel, be ready to travel light, be ready to go immediately and instantly. And you know, there's a, a it's irresistible here to, we almost have to make a comment thinking about um, how many of us believers today, how many of us are ready at a moment's notice to go or do or follow a truth, a light that God shines on truth. How many of us are ready for that? Because a lot of us are, uh, instead of camping on a continuing journey toward the kingdom, a lot of us sort of have moved in. We've kind of moved into Egypt, and a lot of us aren't in any big hurry to leave. You know, the food is satisfactory, things are comfortable, and we've got a warm spot at night. Why would I leave Egypt? But God calls us to be ready at any time. And so the unleavened bread, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, this is always a reminder that we are pilgrims, we are strangers here, as the hymn goes. Uh, heaven is my home. We are passing through. We best not become too deeply integrated into this world. This world is, is soon going to be dramatically changed. Uh, are we just sort of doing the minimum or are we ready to follow our Lord fully and wholly, entirely, as he would lead us? The answer to that question is going to have a lot to do with how much blessing and how much joy you and I experience as we follow the Lord God. So these events, the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread, they are distinct commemorations. God condemns the oppressor and yet he shows mercy. And that's where the slaying of the Egyptians firstborn and the preservation of the Hebrews firstborn comes in. And God delivers the oppressed, who we might add, he delivers the oppressed who are willing to be delivered. Because sometimes we're comfortable in our oppression. We're comfortable being slaves. We're comfortable being a slave to our electronic overlords or government overlords today. Uh, if that's the case, then deliverance might not work out for us. We might die in a bondage that God would deliver us from. And remember this too, the God that we serve today, he's the same God that delivered the Hebrews from Egyptian oppression, and he wants to deliver us today from the kinds of oppression that we're experiencing in our life today. He's the same God as yesterday, today. He is the, has the same principles as yesterday, today. God is the creator and he has the right to determine how it is that he delivers us. We are not our own, we are purchased with a price, but we'll say more about that purchase actually tomorrow. See you tomorrow. God bless you.